Good morning, LCC. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning, LCC. Welcome to the Lighthouse Christian Center Sunday morning service here at the fort. We hope that you had a warm and memorable week in the Lord. Amen. It was really, really hot. Um, of course, here at the fort, we have three things a passion for Christ, purpose for living, and a power to witness. Uh, brothers and sisters, as always, I want to share, so I had to really, really be quick and a lot of things be going on, but three words that I want you to remember this year. Thank you, Lord. Amen, amen. Okay? Thank you, Lord, for life, for healing. Thank you, Lord, for family, for wife, for children, for kids. Thank you, Lord, for changing me yes. and for saving me. Amen? Yes. This morning... Scripture read will be coming from the message version of the Bible. Old Testament, Book of Psalms, chapter 16, verses 9 through 10. Once again, the message Bible version, Old Testament, Book of Psalms, chapter 16, verses 9 through 10. And the power of the word of the Lord reads is thus. I'm happy from the inside out. Amen. And from the outside in, I am firmly formed. You cancel my ticket to hell. Yes, Lord. Amen. That is not my destination. Yes. Amen. Let God add a reading to the doers here and readers of his holy and precious word. Amen. Let's bow our heads as we go before the Father in prayer this morning. Heavenly Father, as we come before you this day, on this beautiful day that you allowed us to see, Lord God, we ask, Almighty God, that you be in the midst of our service here at the fort, Lord, that we reach your people, Lord, that your blessing be upon our powerful pastor, first lady, and the LCC congregation, and our brothers and sisters in Christ around the world, Lord. We ask as we continue on this beautiful journey, Lord, called life, Almighty oh God. Yes. That you bless it with each and every day, Father, the ability to walk, to eat, to see, to feel. Lord, we thank you for all. As we continue on this journey, change us, Lord, for your purpose and for your will, now and forevermore. Lord God, we need you. Lord God, we love you. Lord God, we thank you. It is in your son Jesus' precious name that we pray all these wonderful and powerful messages and things. Amen. 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 Put your hands together as I pray. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. All right. Praise God. Thank you, brothers, for that wonderful scripture and prayer. And we thank God for everyone being here today. How I many you know God is worthy to be praised, Amen. worthy Amen. to be adored? Yes. He is absolutely amazing. We're going to give him praise. We're going to lift our voice. We're going to lift our hands. We're going to move our feet yes. to give him the glory that's due his name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We bless your name today. Oh, we worship you.
sing after you No matter what I have to do Cause I need you more and more I'm chasing after you No matter what I have to do Cause I need you more and more
because you're the God. He rescued me. He rescued me from sin, condemnation, from shame, from guilt, the lack of peace, lack of purpose. He rescued all of us. We only declare we're, we're not going back to that old life. The way things used to be. We worship you.
do my life. Well, praise the Lord. Happy Sunday to you. Last Sunday of January. Yes, ma'am. Yes, sir. We're in 2024. Yes. We've already crossed over. And we thank God for you worshiping with, with us today. Again, we welcome you to Lighthouse Christian Center, where we have a passion for Christ, purpose for living, and power to witness. We trust that everyone has had an amazing weekend, the Lord. Yes. A little bit, little bit warmer today. Praise God. We thank God for that. But uh, no matter what we're here, amen. No matter what we're here to worship the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords, yes. the yes. Great I Am. He's worthy of our praise. And in fact, it's a privilege and honor to worship and serve Him. Yes. And we just being obedient to the Lord. The Bible says, "We seek not the assembling of ourselves." And so we're come congregating yes. together so we can build each other up for good works and love. I believe that's what Scripture says. We want to share a few announcements uh, with you. Some of these you already know. There's one in particular I want you to pay close attention to. But of course we have uh, CDs or digital downloads of every message on Sunday. You can see Brother Brown in the back and place your order for $5. Again, CD orders take around a week. Digital downloads will take a little less time, but we have to please make sure we have an active email address for you on file. Uh, if we have any first time visitors here, let's give God praise for them. Hallelujah. We have people who listen online. Yes. Thank you so much for joining us today. Hey, like the post, uh, subscribe to our YouTube channel, hit the notification bell. Uh, we would love to be a part of your spiritual journey. Share this link with your friends. More importantly, go to our website at lighthousesc.org so uh, we can connect with you. We would uh, like you to uh, click on the contact tab and uh, join our email list. We, we send out a lot of notifications via email. If you like that form of correspondence, emails become too too much. Go ahead and just unsubscribe. But uh, uh, we do send out a lot of correspondence uh, that way. Also, if you'd like to receive text message notifications, you can also uh, go to our website and uh, shoot us an email. We can send you the link that you can sign up to receive uh, those. Uh, that form of notification as well. So we thank God for you being here, and uh, we trust that today's service and message will be a blessing to you. Uh, Wednesday, we have an online Bible study at 7 p.m. You can view the Bible study through a link we send out every week uh, on Zoom, or you can view us live on our YouTube channel as well. So every Wednesday, 7 p.m., we get into the Word of God. And today we'll have children's church, so we release our kids after our special musical selection. I'm going to read a, a verse out of, i go to, go to Proverbs. How about that? Proverbs, give me an opportunity to give Proverbs chapter number three. Verse nine, very familiar verse. It's honor the Lord, honor the Lord with your possessions. And with the first fruits of your increase, so your barns will be filled with plenty and your vats overflow with new wine. And so we see there, that's a cause and effect here. Verse 9 is the cause, verse 10 is the effect. And so the Bible says we should honor the Lord, not just with our praise, our worship, and our time, but we honor him with our resources, uh, the, the wealth that God has blessed us with. And the first fruit of all our increase, and the Bible says, Something amazing will happen, he says. So your barns will be filled with plenty of that overflow with new wine. I heard a preacher this morning saying, we don't give just because we want to be blessed. We give because we are blessed. I know it's blessed. Yeah, we're blessed to be alive. We're blessed to be saved. We're blessed to be a son and daughter of God. That's why we give. Because yeah. God's visible kingdom. That's why we give. Because it is a form of worship. Yeah. Not out of necessity per se. Not because uh, we're forced, but we, we give cheerfully, hilariously, uh, because we yes. know God loves us and he loves a cheerful giver. Praise Amen. God. Many ways you can give. Uh, we can uh, <coughs> eat off him, we can raise him, provide one for you. Also, you can give via Cash App at Cash Tag LCC Donate Zell, uh, Lighthouse SC 777 by our email account. And uh, you can go to our website and click on the Donate tab as well. All right, we'll give you a few moments to prepare your your tithes and offering, and then we will come back and pray with you.
children's ministry. Uh, they, they had that for a while. So they, they, we were ready. We were ready. Praise the Lord. And once again, thank you so very much. Make sure you stay abreast of all of our announcements. Again, see Brother Brown prior to leaving. And uh, we thank God for everything going on here at LCC. All right, let's, let's get into the word again this morning. I, I, I tell you what, it's been a, 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 a lot of things going on. I, I started to call you all, uh, some of you in, and uh, to do a prayer chain. That I know Elder Brown, I was about to call you in, Minister Swift, and, and, and even put it on a group text. I was mentioning earlier this week, some of you know I do some work at uh, some schools, and there's a Christian school, and a 13-year-old boy passed away. It, it, was, it was so tragic. It was uh, such, you know, we were singing the song about thanking God for, you know, for life and for all the things that sometimes we take for granted. Amen. And the, the thing was, I, I taught the young boy's older brother, and I knew the father. I worked with the father this, uh, this summer, Amen. and so I knew the family very well. And, and up there, and, you know, we, we live out in St. George now, and they do a lot of hunting. And it was just a tragic accident. 13-year-old boy mistakenly got shot. And he, he, he passed away instantly. Man, you, you talk about pain. You talk about an entire community that was heartbroken. I was talking about father. He said, yeah, I think I saw it on the, the news as well. 13-year-old boy. And, it, and the thing about it, he, the Christian school, I talked to one of the pastors on staff who was teaching Bible classes. He said, you know, Pastor Graham, Mr. Graham, he, he knew the Bible, knew the scripture. Such a nice kid. I didn't know the kid, but I knew his brother. I, I heard for him. One of the nicest kids you can, you can meet. And, uh, you know, it's, it's tragic because you think about the parents as well. Yeah. You think about the pain. And, yes. And, uh, man, the, the community got together and prayed. And, and I tell you what, I was mentioning this to Carol, how they, they handled the situation. Yes. How they were immediately offering forgiveness to the person who, who fired the shot. And it just, yes. it was... It was just so painful, but yes, sir. it reminds you of just all the things we have every single day that we take for granted. Yes. One of the things that the father had mentioned, he said, please, you know, just do do a couple things for me. You know, you know, pray for our family. Pray yes. for our family. Yes. And he said, if you, if you have a child, you know, please hug them real tight tonight. Yes, sir. Because you, you just you just never know. And and I tell you what, life life is 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 precious. Yes. It, it really yes. is. Yes. Yes. As I get older, you realize that every day is a gift. It is. Every day is a Hallelujah. gift. Hallelujah. Every time, and, and I used to not understand it because, you know, I've, I've been raised in the church all my life, and the, and the older saints, they would always stand up and testify, and they would yeah. always, you know, they would first give honor to God and the head yes. of their life. Yes. They'd give you honor to the, the, the pastor, you yeah. know, deacons, ushers, members, and friends. They'd go through the scale, yes. but, you know, they would always say, I thank God for life. Yes. Amen. Thank God for health. Thank God for strength. My Lord. I didn't understand it then because to me at that age, you know, that was a given to me, but it's, I, I learned what it's, it's not a given. It's a blessing to have life. It's a, it's a blessing to have strength. It's a blessing to have strength. Because tomorrow isn't promised. And so the awesome thing is while we have an opportunity to yes. give God praise and to yes. To honor him with our lives, we need to do so. Yes. Because we never know what tomorrow may bring. And so I don't know about you, I'm, I'm grateful to be here. I'm yes. grateful to yes. have the opportunity to worship together. And say, say, he gave me a second chance. Yes. He gave me yes. a chance to lift up my hands. And yes. Now that I have breath, because I have breath in my body, I want to give him praise. I want to give him glory. I want to let him know that I, I appreciate me being here. And have the opportunity to declare his name, to make his name great, to live for him, to honor him with my life, to make my life count for him yes. while I have an opportunity. I don't want to be a bad steward of the time that he's given me here. I want to let him know that while with the, the time, effort, and energy that you've given me, I gave you my all. I gave you my best. Yes. And that's what we I reflected on this, this week. Yes. Let's just go to the Lord prayer. Father, we bless you. We, we, bless you. we praise you. We honor you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for, for being here. Thank you for your presence thank you, Lord. in the person of the Holy Spirit. Yes. We thank you for everything that has been said and yes. done. God, we need you. Yes. 
We need you more and more every single day. We thank you for everything that has already transpired and what you're going to do for the remaining part of this service. We pray that lives will be changed forever through the power of your word. We honor you. We bless your name. We're leaning on you to be our help. Think through my mind, Lord. Speak through my mouth that those who are here will be touched, edified, strengthened, and set free. We give you praise. We give you honor. We give you all of the glory. All you've done, all you're doing, and all you're going to do. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen, amen, amen. and amen. All right, let's, let's get into the word yes. of the Lord. You know, church is kind of like school. We, 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 we got, you got your textbook in front of you. You look on the screen. We're going to give you this word today. Yes. And, and our lives going to be, it's, become, it's going to go to another level. Amen? Yes. Based yes. on what his word says. So uh, we're going to be in Matthew chapter 5. Make sure I take my time. When I get excited, I start to speed up. So I want to take my time. Not to be before you long. Brother yeah. Brown said I had three hours, so I said, I, I, come I'm on. Come on. Let's get it. Let's get it. We won't be before you too long. But uh, we're in Matthew chapter 5, verses 13 through 16. All this month, we've been teaching from the subject. Our theme has been the culture. You know, yeah. uh, how we can navigate through today's culture as a believer. And this particular verse, I memorized out the King James, you know, it said, you know, you're the salt of the earth, the light of the world. Yes. Salt is lost, as Savior. Wherewith will it be salted? And I want to read this out of the Message Bible. It really amplifies the text. And uh, I think it really speaks to what our, our theme has been this entire month. So Matthew 5, 13 through 16, the reason as follows. He said, let me tell you why you are here. You're here to be salt seasoning that brings out the God flavors of this earth. If you lose your saltiness, how will people taste godliness? You've lost your usefulness and end up and will end up in the garbage. Here's another way to put it. You are here to be light, bringing out the God colors in the world. God is not a secret to be kept. We're going public with this, as public as a city on a hill. If I make you light bearers, you don't think I'm going to hide you under a bucket, do you? Putting you on a lampstand. Now that I have you there on a hilltop, on a light stand, shine. Keep your open house. Keep open house. Be generous with your lives. By opening up to others, you'll prompt people to open up with God. This generous Father in Him. And so once again, our theme this morning is culture. Somebody say culture. culture. Now when you use that word, when we use that word culture, it, it's defined as the, the mindset. The mindset of the majority of people living here today, it, it represents the views that people have and that they have embraced that are contrary to the Bible. It, it represents people who are not born again, those who don't know God, those who have not accepted Jesus Christ as their personal Lord and Savior. And scripture is used synonymous to the word world. And so this is what we're talking about here. Jesus, he gives his take on how we as believers ought to be navigating through today's world or today's culture. We would all agree that the culture is constantly changing, is shifting. And unfortunately, it's not getting close to God. It's not aligning more to biblical principles. You can argue it's going further away. So here we are. We're in this world, beloved sons and daughters of God, endowed with the Holy Spirit. We have our march orders, the word of God. In other places of scripture, Jesus said, I want you, you're in the world, but I don't want you to be of the world. Paul, when writing to Rome, he said, don't be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. In other words, don't assimilate to the practices. Yes, sometimes you're going to stick out like a sore thumb. Yes, it's going to be hard to fit in. That's okay. I want you to stand out. We're marching to a different drumbeat. Yes. The Bible says our citizenship is in heaven. I think that's why it's so important as we 
gather together, as we spend time in the Word, it's critical that we renew our minds in the Word of God. It's critical that we spend time in the Bible. Okay? We just can't be church-minded. We need to have a biblical worldview. The Bible says we're soldiers in his army. The Bible says that we are his ambassadors. Not just people in the ministry. I'm not talking about the pastor, prophet, teacher, evangelist. Okay? Those in the five for ministry. Every born-again believer, we're ambassadors. Amen. We represent him while we're here on earth. Amen. And so Jesus, he speaks more to this point. How we can navigate today through the culture. You know, I remember uh, about a year and a half ago, I was uh, in the background of education, I was teaching online at a particular school that was a struggling school. It was a failing school. You had over 80% of the kids who were not on grade level. That's, that's not uncommon today, unfortunately. But you had kids who were two, three, four years behind grade level. They had all kinds of discipline problems. They couldn't keep a teacher in the classroom, and so they were screaming teachers in online. You had teachers coming in, quitting the same day. You had teachers coming in, they wouldn't even finish their day, walked out, leaving the kids unsupervised. The behavior problems were so bad. And I remember being streamed in to the classroom to help because they had so many vacancies. Long story short, I remember a particular student, uh, it was the eighth grade, I think she was 14 years old, and she was at this school, but she never was there before. She came from a private school. Strong academics, the, the, the culture of the school was totally different. There wasn't a lot of behavior problems, but after the pandemic, her school closed. So she had no choice. She had to go to the school where they had so many issues and challenges. I watched this young lady over several weeks. I was impressed. Because, now granted, I'd like to see how she fared, you know, later on down the line, but for, for, for six months, actually for a whole year, I guess, nine months out of the year, this young lady, she was focused. She continued to do her work. She was well behaved. She was engaged. She asked questions. She, she still kept high expectations for yes. herself. When there was, you can argue, mediocrity all around her, kids failing, not caring about doing their work, no we ain't studying, no we're not doing our homework, playing around in class, kids getting kicked out of class, she stayed there, she was quiet, she did her work. I was just amazed how she never let her surroundings influence her. Yeah. I was amazed on how she continued to set high academic expectations for herself. She wasn't trying to push, put, pull her foot off the gas pedal. I was, I was impressed how all, there was so much craziness around her that she, she navigated through all that and she got hers. She got her education. She got the information. She took it in. Yes. And she was a straight A student. She was 14 years old. You know, as, as Christians, Come on, sir. we're exactly the same way. Come on, sir. We're in the midst of a sin sick world. We're in the midst of a world, a culture that is antithetical to God. Yes, it is. We're in the midst of a society that has embraced and have even normalized it. We have to be like that young girl. We can't be faced by that. We have to be focused. We have to be passionate about our God, even though people may not have want to have anything to do with God. We have to be passionate about souls, loving on God, loving on Jesus, locked into our church, spending time in the Word, spending time in prayer. When, when we're in the minority, we can't be phased. We can't allow ourselves to assimilate ourselves to the things going on around us. We talked about a couple weeks ago in Bible study. When you go to work. You have all kind of people there. Everyone at your workplace is not saved. I would dare say sometimes everyone in your family is not saved. Go ahead. That shouldn't matter. Go ahead. It should not change who you are. It should not change your level of focus. It should not change your hunger and your passion for God. If there is ever a day for us to be single-minded, if there's ever a day for us to have courage, to stand up for our God it is now. Amen. And this is what Jesus is speaking to. He says, you're here for a purpose. Let me remind you why you're here. Yes. We are not here to make a name for ourselves. We're not just here to build our own personal portfolio. We're not just here to climb to the top of our career ladder. There's nothing wrong with those things. 
But how many of you know our purpose is much greater than that? It's spiritual. Yes, We are part of the called out ones. We are part of God's family. And he said, you're here for a purpose. And hear me, you never can lose sight of that. I'm not talking about people who call to the ministry. I'm just talking about every single born again believer. And that's what Jesus said. Verse 13 says, let me tell you why you're here. You're here to be salt seasoned. And so we're here to be salt seasoned in today's culture. Salt. Our pastor, what is salt seasoning? Seasoning. It's godly flavor, if you will. It's, it's godly living. It's kind of like, now I, I do a little bit of cooking. I'm, I need a recipe. Now, I'm not like some of y'all. I, 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 I need a recipe, okay? But I, I'll, I'll do some cooking. But you know, sometimes when you cook it, you taste something like, oh, I need some more seasoning. And then so they have, you know, flavor enhancers. You got accent in it. and all these things. You, know, you have a lot of things that will enhance the flavor so it makes it make the dish you're preparing yes. taste a whole lot better. Yes. And she said, that's what you are. You're here to make this world better. Every space we're in, every place we frequent, when you're home as a believer, because Christ is living on the inside of us. Because we have Jesus, the King of kings, the Lord of Lord, who lives in our heart by faith. We should make our homes better. We should make our places of work better. Why? Because we're there. And because we're there, God is there. Wherever we go, we're there to be salt. Add God flavor to the space we're in. Let me tell you, when, when, when you leave, People shouldn't want you to leave. They don't know. No, you make place better, man. I thought about it with Mark Romero too. It's just for well, he, he was at a job and um and, and he, he does say he's a man of integrity. So I ain't doing nothing wrong, he's done shady. And the guy said, man, Mark, please come back. Like, please, man, listen. It all fell apart when you left, man. Like, we, we need, what do we gotta do? What do we gotta do to get you back? That that should be the norm for the child of God. Like, hey, yo, I had a guy told me, like, listen, man, like, come on, please come back. There is not a position available for you. It don't matter. I'll create one for you. I'll create one. I know what you bring to the table. I know what you do. And that should be the law for every child of God. Because the Bible says while we're here in this sensitive world, while we're here in all this mess and confusion and frustration, we should be here to bring God's flavor to the earth. They should want you to be there. They should want your light to be in that space. They should want the level of excellence that you bring to that environment. To hear the salt and flavor to this world. It's godly flavor, godly living. Pastor Graham, is it possible to live godly in today's culture? Yes. Yes, it is. Jesus said, that's why we're here. To be salt. How I many know Jesus left a perfect example? The Bible says he was here on this earth, tempted at all points, yet without sin. Come on, Pastor Graham, that's Jesus. I'm glad you said that, because I have another example for you. A man under the lesser covenant. You may know him, his name is Noah. The Bible says in that day, there was so much wickedness and corruption going on in the world. People embraced sin. Even the imagination of their heart and their mind was wicked. Yes. It was so bad, sound familiar, that God said, I regret that I even made man. My Lord. But the Bible says, in one translation, Noah was different. My God. He was a just man. One translation said, he was a good man, a man of integrity. My Lord. Nobody like him. The Bible said he was perfect in his generation. He found faith with God. In fact, the Bible said, no matter what was happening around Noah, all the sin, all the unrighteousness, all the pagan worship, all the thoughts and the imagination that were not of God, the Bible said one man, Noah, he walked with God. And I tell my best to you, beloved, is this, that we have to be the exact same way. No matter what's happening in the country, I don't care if they ostracize you, I don't care if they criticize you, I don't care if you lose friends, all due respect. The Bible says you and God are the majority, no matter what's happening, we're called to live for him. We're called to be a culture changer. We're in a counterculture. We're in the kingdom of God. We're supposed to keep living for him. Yes, yes. That's why Jesus said, you're salt, man. Yes, sir. I want you to be seasoning, add flavor My God. to this world. And that's what Noah did. It did not matter. Kind of like that young lady I talked. It didn't matter. 
if people were in there sleeping in class. It didn't matter. Like people said, no, I ain't doing my homework. No, I ain't studying. It didn't matter. Because you know how kids do nowadays. You know, Mother Brown, we, we lower the bar. We, we don't lower the bar. The bar we, the bar's so low now. Because, you know, back, back in our day, the past, you had to have a 70, right? They, they changed all that. They said, no, or if you, you have a 60, you can pass. And my God, if I've ever seen so many students happy to get a 60, like, oh, yes, just come on, give me a 60. Woo, yeah, thank you, Jesus. I just want a 60. Just, just want to pass. In fact, one student said, they probably need to make it 50. I was like, no, no. That young lady, though, it didn't matter. And she had a lot of people around her that were just trying to get a 60. She said, Mr. Graham, I'm shooting for an A. And she go, girl. Mr. Graham, what can I do to improve my score? What can I do to prepare for this upcoming test? What can I do? Is there another way to work this test? I'm glad you said that. So let's look at it this another way. And can I get some extra help? This is not an A average. Ask me for help. How can I deepen my understanding of what you shared today in class? Can I send you an email? Can I do a Google Meet with you? Can I message you on the chat? If I have a question, Mr. Graham, do you mind? Because I noticed that when you ask the question, no one answers. Do you mind if I answer the question if I'm the only one? I don't mind at all. Come on. In other words, because I'm not being phased by what's happening in my surroundings. Yeah. We're called to do the same thing. Because that is what salt looks like. Having God's flavor to the earth, no matter what's happening around us, that's what Jesus did. That's what Noah did as well. I'm still committed to God to live no matter what. So Jesus said, this is, this is why you're here. You're here to be salt seasoning. He, went, he goes on to say, you're also here to be light. Somebody say light, light. light, light. Bringing out God colors in the world. So we're here to be salt seasoning in today's culture. We're also here to be light in today's culture. In other words, we should be shining the light of Christ everywhere we go. How many know God isn't supposed to be a secret? He said, we're going public with this thing. He said, we, we, we need to be light. He says, it's kind of like we are spiritual flashlights in a dark world. And that's what we have to do. This also means, hear me, hear me now, we're also called call to illuminate and expose sin. <laughs> we don't like that part, okay? We're, we're called to expose injustice. We're called to expose unrighteousness and ungodly behavior. That, that's part of our role, too. It was real good when we, you know, we were just you know, enhancing spaces, but, but also we, we call, you know, people, people should feel comfortable sitting around. You know, people shouldn't, you know, feel comfortable uttering expletives around you. They, they should excuse themselves. Because we're called to be light. And I also like that he says, we, we, we're, 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 we're supposed to shine. Okay? We look at this. We have to expose, illuminate, wrong. Immorality. And that's what I believe Paul was trying to portray when he wrote to the Roman church. He said, you, you, you're not supposed to assimilate yourself. You insulate yourself from all of the dogma of the world, all of the practices, the ideology, in other words, the, 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 the humanistic message that, that we as a people, we really don't need God. We can navigate life on our own. We're putting God on the back burner. No, no, that's not that we insulate ourselves from all of that. Let me tell you what, there is a war going on, and it is not with, with missiles and, and guns. There is an ideological war. There, there, that's why he says, Warfare is pulling down every thought, every imagination, every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God. That's why I said more than ever, it is critical that we renew our mind in the word of God. Because if you're not careful, the world will cause you to think differently from what the word says and what God wants you and how he wants you to think. Hey, biblical literacy is valuable. You need your Bible. You need to know what the Word says. Because the culture is going in the opposite direction. Yes, sir. And so he said, as a light, you're, you're, you're here to shine Jesus everywhere you go. What does that look like, Pastor? Now, I'm not saying that every place you go, you, you quote scriptures, rat them off, verses, but people should, should see Christ in you. Yes. They should see 
godly character and behavior in you. They should see godliness and then they should see the light of Christ in you wherever you go. 